What we want to talk about in this second video for Pickens chemistry with the quantum atom is we want to talk a little bit about ionization and we want to take a, talk about some electron spectroscopy. And so when you look at the Bohr energy levels for the atom, this is often called a Rydberg diagram, R-Y-D-B-E-R-G. In this diagram, you can see the uh, N values, the shell numbers or the energy level numbers and the energies associated with them. And you can see that these shell numbers go from N equals one all the way up to N equals infinity. And for reasons from physics, the energy at N equals infinity is said to be zero and that energy goes down and becomes more negative as those electrons approach the nucleus, as they get closer to the nucleus. And so for us to go from N equals one, from negative 13.6 electron volts up to N equals infinity or zero electron volts, the process which takes us from N equals one to N equals infinity would be called ionization. And this would be removing an electron from the atom. And this removal is a complete removal at the point where the electron is at N equals infinity or an energy of zero. It is free to leave the atom. It is free to roam the universe. And then the atom left behind would have a positive charge. For us to take the electron from N equals one to N equals infinity is going to require that we put in 13.6 electron volts and because for the hydrogen atom and because that is the difference here in these energies and that is the energy required to ionize the atom this value to go from n equals one to n equals infinity for any atom is known as the ionization potential So let's look at some photo electron spectra, which are sometimes called photo emission spectra. And an important thing to note here is that we are going to look at a few here for different elements. And we're going to look at these elements and we're going to look at how many electrons are associated with a specific energy. And these energies are on a slightly different scale here. These are given in megajoules per mole. So what we've done is we've taken our 13.6 electron volts and we have said that that was for one single electron from one single atom of hydrogen. And if we now wanted to ionize a whole mole of hydrogen atoms, it would take a total of 1.31 million joules of energy to do that for us to remove electrons from all of those 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. And this 1.31 megajoules is equivalent to our 13.6 electron volts. Notice how it's close, but not quite to being just simply divided by 10. So as a rule of thumb, that'll get us pretty close if we're trying to compare these energies in megajoules to electron volts, but it's not a perfect conversion. If you need the real conversion, you would have to go through that. So how many electrons does hydrogen have in the atom? Well, we already said before in the first video, that hydrogen has one electron. And if you look at this peak here, you can see that this peak height corresponds to one electron and that that one electron would take this much energy to remove from the atom, okay? So what's gonna happen to that as we go up to helium? Well, what changes about the atom? Here was hydrogen, a proton in the nucleus and an electron somewhere outside of that. What's going to change about that atom as we go to helium? Well, in helium, we're going to have two protons. I'm not going to draw the P's. I'm just going to draw a two plus. And somewhere outside of that nucleus, we're now going to have two electrons. What's going to be true about those electrons compared to the nucleus? 
Well, the nucleus has a higher amount of charge. And so those two electrons are going to feel a much larger amount of what we call Coulombic force. And I always joke and say that this is the most important equation in physics. And what it tells us is that the Coulombic force, the amount of force holding the electrons in to the atom is equal to some constant times Q1 times Q2, where Q here represents charge. So one of those Qs would be the charge on the nucleus. The other Q would be the charge on the one single electron that we're looking at at any given time. And the R squared is going to be equivalent to how far away from the nucleus the electron is. So the higher the charge gets in the nucleus, the stronger the columbic force. The closer the electrons get to the nucleus, the stronger the columbic force. And in the case of helium, we've doubled the charge. So we should have a higher force, which means it should be harder to remove the electrons from the atom. And here in our photo electron spec spectra for helium, we see that we've gone from 1.31 to 2.37. And we see in this 2.37 that we now actually have two electrons here, and that those two electrons take the same amount of energy to remove from the atom, that either one is gonna have that much energy. What's really going on here is we're hitting these atoms with X-rays, and we're measuring the energies of the ejected electrons is one way to think about it. Um, Notice also that this is not double, although it's close. The other problem with trying to use this equation here is that these two electrons are also repelling each other. And so that does make the force, the total force holding these in the atom, just a little bit smaller than they would otherwise be. So then here we are on the periodic table. We've seen hydrogen we've seen helium, and if we wanna look at the third element, lithium, notice that comes down to a new row on the periodic table. So something's going to change here for lithium. What do you think the spectra is going to look like for lithium? So for hydrogen, we had a peak size of one. For helium, we had a peak size of two. What do you think is going to be true about the peak for lithium? Well, here we see that lithium doesn't just have a single peak. It now has two peaks. One of those peaks still corresponds to two electrons, but the next peak now corresponds to only one electron. So what this tells us is that in the atom, there are two electrons in one energy level of lithium, and there is one electron in another energy level of lithium. Notice that there's a pretty big difference in energy here. So there's a big difference in energy. Delta E large means different shell, which is what we're gonna call these energy levels in general for where the electrons are in the atom. And that there's one shell with two electrons and a second shell with one electron for lithium. So if we continue along and then we look at beryllium, we see that that second peak increases. We also see that the energy to ionize these electrons goes down and we could compare those energies back to the energies from helium and from hydrogen. So notice that the helium and the hydrogen energies went from about one and about two to about six and 11 for beryllium, but there's this other peak here now that's actually less than one. So these electrons in this second shell are easier to remove than the electrons in the first shell. But we still see a large difference in energy here 
which still tells us that these are in different shells for where the electrons exist in the atom. One reason why we see this, and I'll show you with beryllium, is that the nucleus now has a charge of four plus, but now thinking about our kind of classical orbital depiction of the electrons in the atom, one of those shells, that first shell, can only hold two electrons. And our next shell so far also has two electrons in it. But notice that those electrons are a much farther distance away from the nucleus than the ones in the first shell. And if you think back to the columbic force equation, recall that the distance, the greater the distance from the charges to each other, the weaker the force. And so the electrons that are in the second shell are considered to be on the outside of the atom, and they are easier to remove than the electrons on the inside. So what do you think is gonna happen as we move along to boron or carbon or nitrogen or oxygen? Notice the periodic table has hydrogen and helium, and those are two elements, and they're the first row or the first period of the periodic, periodic table. And that first period is only two atoms wide. The second period here has lithium and beryllium together, and then it jumps over to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So just as before, when we were going from one to the other and we went from lithium to beryllium and we increased this peak, if we're on the same period, we might expect this peak to increase from two to three. But when we go from beryllium to boron, we actually see that that second peak does not increase at all, but instead we see a second peak associated with it. So now both of these peaks are associated with the second shell whereas this first peak is still associated with the first shell. And again, we see that this energy goes down. This energy also goes down before boron. This first peak here was less than one. Now it's greater than one. And we see another peak here that's one. What do you think that's gonna look like if we go to carbon? Well, that second peak grows and it's now equal to two. What do you think is going to happen if we continue and we go from carbon to nitrogen and then to oxygen? And I'm not going to complete the period with these, but when we get to nitrogen and oxygen, we see that that second peak that's in the second shell now holds three electrons. And we see down here, the second shell now holds two electrons. I mean, sorry, four electrons, two electrons more. And I realized I do have the slides to complete this period. If we continue on to fluorine, fluorine has five and neon has six. 